And I think we can go to the second slide. So yeah, um, Lunar Vertex is targeted to uh, Reiner Gamma. So I'll just spend a, a minute or two here describing why we would wanna go to this uh, uh, beautiful and mysterious feature on the lunar near side. Right, so Reiner Gamma um, is uh, the type example of a lunar swirl. It was seen in early telescopic images, you know, hundreds of years ago. It's been a puzzle uh, ever since. And um, yeah, it's a type example of a lunar swirl, which are these um, unusual high reflectance curvilinear markings of unknown origin, although there are a number of hypotheses for what formed them. Now, as it happens, uh, Rhino Gamma is also a magnetic anomaly. The moon doesn't have a global magnetic field, but there are these regional to local patches of magnetized crustal rocks, magnetic anomalies. Um, the origin of the magnetic anomalies is not known, although there are a number of hypotheses. And, um, you know, kind of making things even more interesting, most magnetic anomalies uh, correspond to the swirl uh, albedo features. Uh, then there's the matter of the effect on the solar wind flow. So these localized magnetic uh, fields change the uh, moon's interaction with the solar wind from what it would be if the moon was just an unmagnetized uh, rocky sphere. And uh, a variety of observations from a variety of spacecraft have demonstrated there are actually mini magnetospheres that form over the strongest of these magnetic uh, anomalies. And so uh, that's of interest to space plasma physicists. Um, and then there's the, uh, you know, the, the flux and energy of the uh, plasma that actually makes it down to the surface um, isn't known. And, and, and this ties back into the potential um, origin of lunar swirls because um, solar wind exposure is thought to be one of the agents of space weathering. You know, that is the lunar soil darkening process that causes bright crater rays to fade away with time. And so here in one of these uh, magnetically shielded areas, we can study uh, space weathering in the presence of normal, you know, uh, micrometeorite bombardment, but, um, but attenuated uh, solar wind exposure. All right, so yeah, by, by going to uh, one of these uh, locations such as Reiner Gamma, we can um, examine a bunch of interesting questions uh, related to, you know, planetary geophysics, space plasma physics, planetary geology, all in a relatively uh, small, uh, small area. All right, so now um, jumping back a bit to actually what is PRISM, right? So this was this new program that uh, has science packages, NASA sponsored science packages that are delivered to the moon on board uh, uh, commercial landers, right? And um, each of the PRISM calls has had different parameters for the investigation. So for PRISM 1, um, there was a $30 million uh, cost cap. And uh, any uh, bells and whistles, <laughs> like mobility, a robotic sampling arm, things like that, that had to be covered within the investigation budget. Uh, launch is three years after selection, and there's a much greater risk, uh, acceptance of risk and far fewer requirements for reporting and documentation than there is for a normal um, NASA uh, flight program. Uh, th these investigations are covered under something called the 7120.8 uh, requirements, which is a technology uh, and uh, research uh, payload. So our proposal was uh, selected uh, just a shade over uh, two years ago in June of 2021. Um, these are the lunar vertex science goals, the things I've uh, mentioned here, investigate the origin of the magnetic anomalies, investigate the origin of lunar swirls, and uh, look into the structure of the uh, magnetic uh, mini magnetosphere up above uh, Reiner Gamma. And, uh, you know, related to this in, in, the, in the process of examining the, uh, uh, investigating those goals, we're going to uh, learn more about the nature of space weathering on a silicate uh, regolith. 
So we've got uh, payload elements on a lander and on a rover. So a bunch of cool hardware pictures, you know, okay. Things are starting to be, things have been built and are being delivered. Um, we have uh, three instruments on the lander. There's an array of cameras to provide uh, geologic context and also data for photometric analysis. Um, this uh, suite of cameras was built by Redwire uh, Aerospace. There's a, a magnetometer that is gonna operate uh, during cruise descent and then once on the surface. Uh, this was uh, uh, conceived and, and built at, at APL. It's kind of a novel design. Uh, that mast is about 50 centimeters tall. There's a uh, flux science grade flux gate magnetometer up at the tip and down at the base are four commercial magnetometers that allow us to do gradiometry and uh, remove the vehicle field uh, from the natural field that we wanna sense without having to have like a 10 foot long boom as is uh, traditional. Um, then there's a plasma spectrometer uh, to uh, tell us the uh, energy flux uh, direction of the uh, ions and electrons that make it down to the ground. Um, and that's uh, provided by uh, Southwest Research Institute. Now we have a rover because it's uh, of interest to be able to uh, make measurements at uh, spatially distributed locations, especially outside the area of regolith that's disturbed by the lander's uh, landing rocket exhaust. Uh, so we, uh, we bought a rover from a company in Colorado called Lunar Outpost. That's the a photograph of the, the flight rover um, right there. Uh, so the, uh, it, it was delivered to APL in, in April. And um, at APL, we integrated uh, two instruments uh, with the, the rover vehicle. Uh, the first is a, another APL uh, magnetometer suite. And then uh, inside the body mounted inside the, the rover is a multispectral microscope that uses active LED illumination in five uh, chosen for lunar science wavelengths uh, to give us information on the composition of the soil. And also the texture images are very important uh, for understanding uh, particle size porosity for testing hypotheses for the origin of swirls. Uh, yeah, so to, to summarize, um, with the first PRISM mission, uh, we're gonna go to this great, interesting and beautiful place called Reiner Gamma and answer a bunch of uh, important questions in a, in a range of uh, uh, fields of, uh, of planetary science. In fact, uh, just like the tagline says there, we're exploring the intersection, right, of uh, geoscience and, and space plasma physics. It's a solar powered mission. Um, uh, the lander and rover aren't required to uh, survive the lunar night, so it'll be about a 13 day surface mission. And listed below here are some of the uh, programmatic milestones. So we passed our uh, preliminary design review in May of last year, CDR in December, um, all the lander instruments uh, were delivered on time and within budget, and all the lander instruments have actually been delivered to the lander. Um, the rover instruments were delivered on time and on budget. Uh, the two camera systems, VCA and uh, RMM, uh, underwent radio cal radiometric calibration at APL. And even today as we speak, the rover is undergoing uh, INT environmental testing at APL with shipment uh, expected uh, according to the current schedule to the lander sometime in September or October of this year. And a uh, launch will maybe in sometime in 2024 and NASA selected intuitive machines for our delivery to Reiner Gamma. So that's it, thanks.